actual thing starts to. Thank you. Hi guys. Hi Sissy. Thank you guys for joining. I hope you guys are having a good day. Get your tea, get your wine, because we're going to chat. <laughs> awesome. Hello, everyone. We're so excited to officially be joining you here at the launch of Mrs. Book by Tiffany Corey. We could not be more excited uh, to be here with you all. Uh, it truthfully has been such an amazing journey uh, working alongside Tiffany, being with here, being with her in this journey of book uh, publishing, book writing, and all of the amazing stuff in between. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. We truthfully appreciate it so much. Uh, every author and every uh, person who ever written, writes a book knows that it truthfully takes a village to write a book. Uh, it's not just a, a one-person show. It's not just a one-person endeavor. I truthfully Truthfully, as a community, and we are so excited to have you all here joining us live uh, to celebrate this beautiful, beautiful book and this incredible, beautiful author, uh, Tiffany, that we have uh, in store today. Thank you, everyone. Make sure you're commenting. Make sure you are sharing uh, with the well wishes for Tiffany, um, all of the amazing good vibes. Please be sharing it in the comments. Share this um, live with everyone that you know, uh, and let's make it an amazing and amazing night. So thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I, I do want to say a couple of announcements, though, before we officially get started. One is that we are going to have three special winners get three free copies of the amazing book by Tiffany Corey, of course. So please make sure uh, to stay uh, tuned, uh, be commenting, be engaged, and all those who registered will be automatically entered to win uh, one of the free books. So we are so excited. Uh, to have obviously Tiffany uh, joining us and uh, and for her to be here. Uh, but with that, I know you guys are not here to meet to see me, which I want to briefly introduce myself. My name is Gabby Hernandez French. I am the author concierge here at Fake Factor Media, and I had the pleasure to work with Tiffany uh, on the day today, side by side, working uh, to make her book uh, and her dream come true. So thank you all for being here uh, and for us, Fake Factor Media, for uh, allowing us, uh, Tiffany, to be part of your magical journey. So I'm so excited to officially get started. <laughs> <laughs> um, and but with that, I definitely want to take the opportunity to introduce uh, the one and only person that you guys are all here supporting and wanting to uh, be here with. Of course, we have the incredible Tiffany Corey. Tiffany Corey is the author of Mrs., uh, is exploring the journey of her life while Ms., I'm sorry, not Mrs., Ms., <laughs> <laughs> oh, <that's> for me. <laughs> yes, Tiffany Corey, author of Ms, is exploring the journey of her life while rising up from post-divorce as a single mother who is a beauty queen with no king. Growing up in Southern Belle in Georgia, moving north when time where time moves faster, she became a successful salon owner and was crowned the first ever Miss Inner. Illinois International 2020 and Miss in Illinois World International 2021. And not to mention, just recently, she competed in the Miss World International pageant in Miami, Florida, and was double crowned as the Miss World America Celebrity 2021 and the Miss USA Universe Lady. Woo, congratulations, Tiffany. <laughs> the rock <laughs> today. Yes, and they are in their background. We're so excited to share that. Throughout her life, she has learned how to love herself and was always aware of who she was, even in her younger years. With aspirations for her dreams to come true and to see now the challenges that she has conquered, uh, Tiffany is compelled to share her story with others to circumvent turning her pain into purpose. She navigates this new beginning at 40 years old as a risk taker with an open aptitude to advise on divorce, dating, independence, self-love, and self-care. With over 20 years of experience in the makeup and hair industry, she dedicates her life to helping others feel beautiful on the inside and outside. Her inspiration is her son, 
and her dedication to supporting him and teaching him to bless others is what motivates her. Her strength to rise from trauma is to never let him feel like he cannot do anything that he wants to do in his life. She also wants to, wants to own your title in the stage of life. And she says, whether you are a miss, a missus, or a ms, she wants you to know that you are never and will never truly be alone. And with that amazing introduction, welcome, welcome, Tiffany. <laughs> You guys, I just a big, huge thank you to you, Gabby, for everything. Gabby has been my constant texts, constant calls, constant emails, you know, to try to make sure that we got everything buttoned up and perfect in time for Miss, where is it? My Miss World pageant. So the pressure was on, especially during a pandemic year. You know, we were all isolated. I had a salon that was open, then closed, then open, then closed. And, you know, just trying to navigate getting the book done before I went and did this amazing opportunity, which I'll tell you more about in a little bit. Um, just getting the book completely done so that I had it, you know, ready for you guys, because it's all about truly how I got to this point. And I couldn't have done it without all the women a, in this Facebook group. And now, you know, so many of you that have joined on here as well on the event, but, and all the people who have helped me write this book, which were truly the angels that were in my life since day one. And to get here, it, it, it was not easy. Uh, lots of tears were cried, lots of fear, lots of people saying, keep going, keep going. This behind me was just God saying, let me just give you a little bit, well, a lot more of a push to get this behind you and to, to know that the reason that I'm doing this is to help and inspire others. And giving me this platform and these, these crowns just tells me more that it's going to work. And hearing from some of the people who have already read the book, they're saying it's touching them. So that's all I want. That's all I really want. And I think that my team, Gabby and Jackie, who you'll talk to in a little bit as well, um, and Michelle, who helped me with some editing and some of my other friends who you'll meet in a little bit, they get it. They get my message and they understand why I did what I did. It's not just standing up there and, and competing for a pageant, which of course is fun and challenging and puts you in a position where you're pushing yourself harder than you've ever pushed, but to send a message and to make a difference for everyone, I had to do it myself. And I couldn't have done it myself without my friends and all the advice that everyone gave me to get back up on my heels and get out there and shine even by myself with no king. I, and my friends understood that and they helped me. So hopefully this will also help you as well. Yes, thank you so much, uh, Tiffany. You're absolutely amazing. And I think that, like I said in the beginning, this journey that we've seen you uh, be on from the very beginning, from this idea that you had to write a book to now seeing those amazing copies next to you uh, and you opening your heart and saying, this is my story. This is what's been going on. It's so awesome uh, to see and, and now see the final product is, is so beautiful. So I'm so excited uh, for this evening. We have such amazing stuff in store and, and I can't wait to dive in. Let's do it. <laughs> So one of the first things, Tiffany, I know that everyone watching, um, you know, people are engaging with us and we want to uh, figure out a little bit of what happened uh, in this journey as, in, as an author. Uh, I want to have a little mini book author interview with you about truthfully, uh, you know, getting into the um, into the ideas, into the meat of you of becoming an author and all of the amazing stuff. Um, so I have a couple of questions for you and I want, you know, to hear your thoughts, to hear what you're thinking and for all of us, uh, those watching for them to know as well. I had the pleasure of working with you, like I said, so I know a lot of these awesome parts of you, but I want everyone to know the amazing author that you have or be have become and are continuing to become just throughout the day. So first and foremost, how did this process start for you? Um, what was your inspiration to saying, yes, I need to write this book and to kind of give us a little bit of that background in, from the beginning, if sure. you will. Well, it's funny because even when I was younger, working at the makeup counters, I was always trying to write a book. And I, I, I remember a, my old little disc ROMs that I used to write makeup tips and tricks and try to say, I'm gonna write a book one day. I've always wanted to write a book. You know, I think it's just my artistic nature of loving to write and create. Um, when I was basically, uh, when I 
found out I was going to be getting a divorce and my entire life came crashing just as very suddenly. Um, I wrote and I wrote more for me as a therapy because what I was experiencing was too much for my brain to even comprehend. Um, going to court and fighting a battle and a war that I never, never was taught or prepared for how to do, which you're not when you go through a divorce. It's absolutely terrifying. It's your entire life. It's your children's lives. It's not a joke. And in order for me to cope with what I was experiencing, I would go write. I would write every night. And I would just, as it was happening to me, I was like, oh, that's going to be chapter 35. And it just made it into such a story that I, I was able to just say, wow, this, you can't even, you know, write this literally, <laughs> but, um, but I would write about it. And last year in July, so just a little over a year ago, we were on lockdown and I got COVID. I was one of the first people to get it out of all my friends I knew. And I was really scared and I was quarantined for 15 days. Um, I had written, I had written during my whole divorce, but I didn't really write for a little while because I had done my Miss Illinois pageant. I had opened my salon. I bought a new house. I was getting back on my feet and I took a break. When I quarantined, I thought I'm gonna read back what I've written and I'm gonna start writing again. I've got 15 days in quarantine. What else am I gonna do? Couldn't have my son, couldn't have anyone near me. So I started to read it again and on the floor again, I was not okay. Ended up Ubering myself to the hospital, said, I. I'm dying, you know, all the things. And it was a bad experience. I hit a rock bottom again that I didn't think I was going to hit ever again. Um, one year post-divorce. And I said, never, I came home from the hospital because my good friend came and picked me up. She's watching. I love you, Natalie. Uh, but I came home and literally went to my back patio door and there was the biggest double rainbow. I can't make this up. The biggest double rainbow I'd ever seen in my life. And I cried and I prayed. And I swore I would never, ever get that way again. And I knew I needed to delete every single bit of that book that I had written during my divorce. And I let it go. I deleted it. I started over. And this is it right here. So now it's right. It's not, I mean, I, people are saying there's, there's sad times in there. There's happy times in there. I'm a lighthearted, fun person. So I'm not trying to give it any kind of like you know, sadness to it or anything. It's real and it's raw, but it's not, there were some things that I think my body made me forget on purpose to protect me. And I needed to forget those. So I released a lot of bitterness and pain so that I could do it properly, leave a good legacy, be a good mother, you know, represent all the things that I wanted to represent about surviving divorce, but in the right way. So I feel really good about it. This yeah. Time. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> no, I think no, the first time I, I talked to my, my team, I said, I just cried the entire hour of that zoom. And I was like, I have to do this, but I don't know what to do. And they were like, Oh my gosh, you have quite a story. And I was like, how do I start? And they literally sat down. Michelle sat with me and said, we're brainstorming start over. I took a trip after I was of course not COVID uh, whatever risky, but, um, I took a trip and I just really started it and I wanted it to be right. And I feel like it's finally right. So I couldn't have done it without you guys for sure. Guiding me. Yes. No, of course. Thank you for sharing that. I think that's so awesome that, um, you know, you are sharing all of that. Cause that's the truth. That's kind of the journey that you went through. And we're so excited that obviously we were a part of it, but like you said, it was such a journey, such a process. Um, and it kind of, it kind of took uh, some, uh, like phases of it. <laughs> and I do remember that trip where you went away and said, Hey, I need to just kind of come back and figure out what I'm writing and, and regroup to the words and experiences that I have. So, um, I love that, that, you know, you had to go through everything uh, in this journey to, to have this final amazing product, which is your beautiful book <laughs> and memoir of everything. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. I love that. And something I want to ask you too, um, Tiffany, obviously you talk a lot about, you know, your personal experiences that you've gone through, some of which have not been easy at all. Uh, you know, I would call it, you know, some devastating experiences, but you've also had gone through such amazing, incredible experiences that, you know, someone can think, can look at you and say, wow, like, look at all the stuff she's accomplishing. I want to know how um, being a pageant 
queen um, really affected her um, if it did uh, this process of also becoming a writer. Um, obviously, you know, you're a pageant queen before you became an official author, which is really cool. Um, but kind of how was maybe that, that experience with, you know, being a, a queen and participating in pageants to now writing and being an author? <laughs> what was that? It, it's funny how thing, miracles just happen. And when I was, you know, really in a bad place, I mean, like I said, it was, you know, what was right after I literally posted on Facebook saying, I'm divorced, it's official. I was approached by the director of the Illinois International Pageant System. And she said, we're creating the first ever Ms. category. And we want you to run and represent that you don't need a king to be a queen. I can barely even get those words out of my mouth because it, I literally just cried and I prayed about it. And I thought, wow, is this what I'm supposed to do? And truly that experience, it was the first pageant experience I'd had since I was a little girl. And it was incredible. I mean, I was scared to death. I, I was absolutely terrified and I just did it. Everyone was cheering for me and my son was there watching and I won. And that became a year during a pandemic to just do charity. And I realized this is giving me such an ability to help impact kids with cancer or um, you know, getting bikes for kids that were, you know, needed bikes for Christmas or feeding people. We fed families Thanksgiving meals and Christmas presents. And, you know, just during a pandemic, what could we do? And I realized my son was watching and he was giving with me as my little prince by my side, his confidence started to grow with his suits and his ties and my crown, you know, so it was amazing to watch what it was happening to him as well. The book thing was kind of just like, I don't know, I don't know, I wanna do this, but you know, what did I write? I couldn't even remember what I had written. So with that pageant experience, then catapulted this one, which they approached me and said, you know, you'd be perfect. They saw my Miss Illinois and they said, you'd be perfect for Miss World. So I applied, I won for Illinois during the pandemic and then just finished getting back from Miami and, and getting the awards that I got. So it's all just divine timing. I mean, they say it, it's true. You know, just like I even say in the book, just like trauma can happen to you at any minute, so can a miracle. And I try to look every day now at, okay, what are my miracles? Let me take a look. Cause I feel like if you're really looking for them, you notice them more. And it could be just a simple phone call from someone that you haven't heard from for a while. And it changes your whole day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's really opened my eyes and I, I just turned 40 also last year and so much changes when you're, when you hit 40 and I know everyone that's 50 and up right now is saying, oh, please, because <laughs> I hear it gets even better and that's good. I'm excited for that. <laughs> but uh, 40 for me meant I don't really care a little bit. You know, I start, started to not care as much about what people thought. Mm hmm to be honest. And it was just about what do I think? And what does my son think? And how do I feel about myself? So maybe I did more internalizing, which I try to get my readers to do in the book as well. Even in the journaling section, I want people to think of like, what are those scary goals that you have that are terrifying to you, but you somehow think about like, but could I, you know, and it's like, gives you that little <laughs> nudge, like, just try it. Like, who, why not? You know, and, and can you change your, your profession? Like you change the color of your hair. You guys know I used to be blonde and I said, uh, uh no more. Um, <laughs> thanks to COVID as well, but I will never go back to blonde. I, no offense, blondes. I love, love, love doing blonde hair, but I belong to be brunette. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So cool. Thank you so much for sharing. And I think that um, I love too is the bit where you shared about um, even just your son and how his confidence started to rise up, uh, you know, with watching you be confident and doing what you loved and kind of, you know, seeing all of this, which is so, so beautiful. And, um, and with that, I want to share just a couple of um, uh, some old um, <laughs> not old, but um, some exciting uh, photos from the, your Illinois days, <laughs> which some of these beautiful pictures that you have here uh, was from your past photo shoots. And just to show that, you know, you were a pageant queen or are a pageant queen going through all these amazing stuff and you can get dolled up, you know, physically, but, you know, also emotionally and, you know, writing and, and sharing that with you, um, with your readers. So I think that's so special. 
uh, you know, you're an award-winning pageant queen, hairstylist, philanthropist, and now you can add author uh, under your name, which is so, so awesome. <laughs> Uh, so cool. Um, but with that, I definitely want to um, ask you one last question about kind of the book process before we move on to our next part of the program, which we have some amazing uh, people as well joining us today. But I want to know overall, what was your experience like with even just the design of the book with, you know, the process of it? Um, obviously, we worked with Michelle Kelly, our amazing editor, which, you know, you have mentioned, uh, but we also, you know, went to design and then we had to go through proofreading and, and it's also a process. <laughs> but what was your like, what was your experience? Yeah, like thinking about, you know, how do you want this book, to, you know, the colors, design, um, even the font, stuff like that. How did you feel going through all of that, actually creating this beautiful book? I feel like I learned a lot and I never knew, I knew I was, a, I like to write, you know, but I didn't know what really, I mean, sorry if any of my teachers, because I do have teachers in here as well from growing up. Sorry, I didn't really know what a preface was and I didn't really and I had to look and research, what is a preface? What is a dedication? What is a acknowledgement? Like what's the difference between all these different things? So you guys did guide me well through that so that I could understand what, what you needed from me. Um, and then as far as like, and the layouts and everything, Michelle was really helpful to get me, you know, the, to, we did it in, a, in a, a Google drive where basically everyone could just read and edit along, but she never, it hurt my feelings. She never, you know, said, no, take this out. It's terrible. You know, which is what I was kind of like thinking somebody would do, but she would just, she would actually compliment me. Like as she went along, she was like, love this. This is so good. You know, I made a, you know, you forgot a period there. Don't forget to do quotes here. And you knew this many spaces here, just different things that were, you know, I had no idea that I read a lot, but I didn't really know. Um, as far as the, the, the layout of the book, I knew I wanted green and peach because uh, that's my like Southern thing, <laughs> my house is. And I love peach because I'm from Georgia. I love green because it just reminds me of like Kentucky Derby horses. I, the horses are a big deal in this book as well. You'll, you'll understand why when you read it, but I love that whole Southern, you know, green color with like the peach, it's just perfect. <laughs> so, I mean, I literally told them, I said, I want to try to like make it look like titles, almost like when you go to the DMV and it says title, Mr. Mrs. Ms. You know, and then I threw this idea and you guys just boom. And I said, done. Love it. Yes. Like I didn't even have to, there was nothing to change. You guys got it. <laughs> Yeah, no, I really, really love that. And I think it's cool when we connect with our authors to know, you know, what is something that is meaningful to them, you know, even to the colors, the peach, what the symbolism that means to you. So all of that is so important to us to, to make it this book unique for you, uh, which I think we did and we nailed with you together. So I'm so happy and it's a beautiful book. And we hope everyone watching gets their copy and, you know, is, is watching and, um, and really being a part of this together. Wow, but thank you so much, Tiffany. And with that, I definitely am excited to also bring up some special, special guests. Um, this part of our program, um, we have incredible guests joining us that are very meaningful to Tiffany. And I know I'll hand this um, uh, the mic over to you, Tiff, <laughs> after, but, um, you know, this book, like I mentioned in the beginning, it's not just a one person kind of show. It, it really takes a village, um, as I mentioned, and a community that is under um, and supporting, you know, all those our authors because support systems are so important um, and necessary. So with that, I want to um, give the floor first to Tiffany to introduce a couple of beautiful guests that we have in store, two of which have read, I mean, all of them have read the book, but especially, uh, uh, you know, incredible people that are part of the community of Tiffany. <laughs> so hopefully, I, I just want to say, I hope you guys can hear it on Facebook. Give us a, a thumbs up if you can hear. I hope you can hear everything that's happening here because I will be playing this video on our page later so you guys can see the actual screens and who, who I'm talking to. So that will happen as well. Um, but I want to introduce um, a couple of friends of mine who I asked to come on because they have read my book and they shared some great feedback. Thank you so much. I got a thumbs up. Um, I, I invited a couple of friends on here that have given me some really good feedback from the book and it really touched me. 
So I invited them to come here and just tell me a little bit about what they thought of the book. And they said, absolutely. So thank you guys so much for coming. So who should we start with? Let's start with Rachel. Rachel, um, would you just say a little bit about like what you thought about the book? Not, I know you were putting you on the spot today. <laughs> that is perfectly fine. So I absolutely love the book. Um, I am not a big book reader. Uh, I listen to books a lot, but to actually be able to sit down, read a book, uh, I just don't do it. Uh, I'm very busy. I run three different businesses, so I'm on the go a lot. Uh, listening to them is easier. Now, uh, I got my book in the mail at about 1230. Uh, I called my day short at five and forced myself to stop reading so I could go make dinner for my family and then finished it and text Tiffany. I think it was about 730 or eight o'clock, like, Oh my God, amazing book. Um, me personally, I have been through a divorce. So I, I think I really do believe everybody's divorce, if you've been through one or a separation, everybody's is different, everybody's is unique, but I do believe that everybody goes through the same emotions. Uh, with me, it was anger and sadness and how am I going to be a single mom? How am I going to be able to do anything? Um, so yeah, it was years of working on that. Had there been a book like this, when I went through my stuff 15 years ago, that would have been amazing. Uh, but there wasn't. So, but yeah, I mean, it is just, I have not known Tiffany as long as some of the others. I actually, believe it or not, met Tiffany through her ex-husband uh, because I was his insurance agent. <laughs> Actually, it was ex-boyfriend from high school, Rachel. Chad Venters. Yes. Yes, yes. Chad Venters. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> so um, after <laughs> I, I, um, I, I knew kind of what she was going through. Um, and then uh, as we got to know each other better and obviously have, uh, the divorce uh, stories, uh, comparing stories. Uh, and it was one of those things been there done that um divorces can be very traumatic and especially when you have kids involved uh you want to try to do what you can to make it easy as possible no animosity that your child is seen uh but at the same time you're still going through all of those emotions and then as a mom I feel like it was really hard for me to split that time uh, that to me was probably hands down worst thing of going through my divorce is now I have to share my child. Uh, I had my child every single day with me. I never had to share him with anybody else. Uh, and now somebody is taking him every other weekend or, you know, a couple times uh, during the summer. Uh, that was that was very new. Uh, but I will tell you, uh, on the other end of that, my son is now 16 years old. Uh, it is nice to have the break when he goes to his dad's. So, uh, and, and we, believe it or not, me and my ex-husband now, we have a wonderful relationship. He is probably one of my best friends. But I think that we honestly, we had to get through all of the BS of our divorce to get to that point. Uh, because for the for the first several years, it was a lot of anger, a lot of anger between the two of us that we just had to learn to let things go. So yes, your book, absolutely amazing for anybody. I wouldn't even say anybody going through a divorce necessarily, a divorce, separation, whatever the case may be. And for somebody like me, that took me all the way back to my divorce. And I felt like I could connect with you on that level because I knew exactly what you were feeling at that point in time, all the way through the book, the whole time. It's amazing because when you go through it, you think, if I can't fix, if I can't figure this out, how am I going to help other people figure this out? Do you know what I'm saying? And Absolutely. that's exactly how I felt. And I thought I'm going to journal it and write about it and figure this out, how to be okay by myself how to pick myself up and be truly happy every day, dancing around my kitchen as much as possible for me, you know, yeah. and it's that, and you know, I mean, Rachel, Rachel was my insurance person, to be honest, when I was married. And so when I called her saying, I don't know what to do, you know, home insurance, jewelry, you know, all the different things. 
that I didn't understand. I didn't really manage on any of it. You know, she was guiding me, but then we were ending up talking for two hours and I was just crying. <laughs> but she gave me this feedback about the book. It meant so much to me because she knew how hard this was for me. And I was crying her saying, I just, I don't, I need a man. And she's like, no, you don't, you need to get strong. And I'm like, okay, I'm trying, you know, and she would coach me through. So her feedback of this, she gets it. This is to help anyone to not go, you know, prevent from having to go through it. Or if you are going through it, you know, hopefully it will help you the way that she helped me and everyone else helped me too. Absolutely. Thank you, Rachel. You're welcome. <laughs> so now I'd like to introduce uh, my friend, Leslie Hunter, who was Mrs. Florida at the Miss World pageant. And we became like, serious sister, best buddies. Um, she called me how long ago yesterday or the day before and said, I read your book. Oh my gosh. And I was like, oh, can you share this on my um, book launch uh, video? So hi, Leslie. Thank you for coming. Hey, Tiffany. Hey, everybody. Um, yeah. So, you know, as Tiffany mentioned, we, it's funny, Rachel, you were saying you probably haven't known her as long as some people. Well, I, I may have, uh, <laughs> Being in that category because I literally met Tiffany literally last month. Um, and just like through the through the national pageant we had for Miss World International, Miss World America pageant, she's representing Illinois, as you all know, and I was um, representing Florida. And so we, as she mentioned, just just immediately like connected. I mean, seriously, and I'm not just saying this, like you just felt like a sister when I when I first met you. So we we had that spiritual connection. And um, so in terms of the book, it's interesting. And again, kind of like you, Rachel, I, you know, I ordered the book. I knew there was a book launch. You know, I seen it through Tiffany's page. And so I just I'm kind of driven person that it's like, okay, you know, I, I want to support her and I want to know what's going on and get to know more about her life. But also, you know, like Rachel and many other uh, people and women on the call, I run a business myself. I'm also in a, a master's program that's pretty rigorous and different things going on. So it's very rare, unless it's literally academic reading, which takes up a lot of my time, that I have the time to read for pleasures. But I similarly um, to what Rachel was saying, I plan to read like 10 pages here, 10 pages, you know, whenever I get got a break. I literally started as I as you know, I shared with Tiffany, um, and it's like did not stop, had to stop, you know, to like take a business call or take a lunch break. But from at 75 pages was my first break. And like, by the time I got back to reading, I would finished the book in like no more than two days. I think I read the first 75 and like definitely the first day. And then the remainder, which was around that amount, um, you know, the following day. And I, you know, just raved about it. Like the first day it was, I, I mean, it's a great book. But the, I was so like, um, you know, Im impressed and just touched, you know, by the book that after the first day, I was like, I called my mom. I'm very close. Also, like you, you seem to be Tiffany with your mother. We talk almost every day. And so I literally was like, mom, please check out my friend's book. <laughs> like, you know, you're, you're great. And I already told my mom about Tiffany. And I already we talked to your mom too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Tiffany talked to my mom. And so I called my mom and was like, you got to you have to at least start reading it. And, you know, depending on what you have going on, there's a book launch. And I was like, I will even, you know, gift it to you. Cause I didn't want her to try to figure out and probably do more Amazon stuff than she did. So I didn't want her to get like frustrated trying to, to, to do the technical stuff. So I ordered it for her. And I mean, she also, um, I'm pretty sure she finished the book. She's probably tuning on through Facebook and it's just amazing, Tiffany. I have to say, I'm a writer as well. I have a copywriting business and a resume writing business. And so just from different aspects, this book really touched me from a writing aspect. You know, I do tend to be critical because it's what I do every day. And, and, um, and I just thought your writing was wonderful. Um, you know, and I know you naturally have guidance, but honestly, like the writing was fantastic. And also it just really touched me. And I feel like everyone who read it, I'm sure it touched them too. I am not, I, I am a survivor, um, fortunately and unfortunately of um, sexual abuse as a child. So I definitely am a trauma survivor. However, I'm 
not a survivor. Uh, I have not gone through domestic abuse. And, you know, thankfully, thank, thank, you know, God that I am in a loving and supportive marriage. However, like Rachel mentioned, this book, um, it, it has a, a target audience because it will definitely help those that have gone through domestic abuse. However, it is definitely not limited to those that have gone through divorce or domestic abuse because this book touched me so deeply, even though I'm in a really great and loving marriage, um, just so deeply. And so if it touched me that deeply, I can only imagine how effective it will be for those that have gone through domestic abuse. But I think any, as you mentioned, I literally have the book right here. <laughs> as you mentioned, um, as a, no matter the title, Rise from Trauma to Triumph and Learn to Love Yourself. I think, you know, um, as a survivor of, uh, you know, sexual abuse when I was a child, I think that it, it was impactful for me, I think, even if I hadn't gone through that, but probably resonated more because even though in a different sphere than you with the, the um, domestic and marriage sphere, I went, you know, I went through different trauma, but the trauma of needing to love yourself, the tra uh, trauma, like you mentioned in the book of not blaming yourself and just, you know, as women, I think it's so important as women and as most women being nurturing and empathic, it's so uh, crucial for us, um, whether we've gone through those type of traumas or not, to just love ourselves. So I think it touched me so deeply um, because I'm super big on like lifting up women and empowering women and letting them know, even having a great husband that I love, I still am a firm believer that you do not, women do not need a man to be full and whole in themselves. So, you know, that's just always been in my spirit. And so you touched it deeply and I'll stop talking because I could talk forever, but I am so happy and proud of you. And that this book just like, it's just a wonderful book. I will, I will definitely share it. A couple of my friends, I put a review up on my Facebook about it because I wanted to share it like, um, you know, before it took two days or whatever to show up on Amazon before the book review. But I know, you know, one, one or two of my friends were planning to order it. And I'm just like, I just, I'm going to tell everyone I know about this, whether they've been through domestic abuse or not, because it's so uplifting. So Gosh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here today, too. Yes. I love you. See, I love you, too. Even though we just met, we are like serious sisters, not just in the pageant world, but in life. Yes. This woman is incredible. Serious oh, sisters. Thank you. Thank you. And thank then my last wonderful, wonderful, like I call her my angel that I want to introduce. It's my friend Tammy Pinksker. Tammy, thank you for being here. So, Tammy, I, you, okay, the reason I really invited you here was not to ask what you thought of the book, because I already know, was for me to tell you how much I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. So you don't even have to, that's why I said, don't worry about it. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, I like, appreciate you. <laughs> recognition to this amazing woman and human being and friend of mine, Tammy, because at the point right before I finished the book, I had a, a breakdown, just fear, and it was almost like paralysis. And I didn't even tell my team, Gabby, you didn't even know this, but I was like, am I doing the right thing? Am I saying the right thing? Am I, am I putting things out there? You know, like you're putting your whole life out there. You know, everything inside of me is in this book. Everything I've been through. And I was all of a sudden, you know, self-doubt started kicking in and I, my friend Tammy, who's my angel, one of my angels, I've I try. Uh, she stepped in. She actually, Tammy, what's your, you have a degree in it in public uh, relations. Public relations. So she said, hold on. And she's a pageant queen as well. I met her um, at a charity event and she said, let me read it. And I said, please read it. And she, didn't you tell me you read it three times in a row? And she took notes and she made some suggestions. and. This person held my hand and combed the book with me hand in hand, helped me so much to get it to a place where I thought, wow, I mean, literally I was crying reading her suggestions because she just gets it and she got me and she was able to, she said, you're scared. I can feel your fear, right? Didn't you say that to me? And I said, yes, yes. I think that Tiffany would say this. I think Tiffany would say that. So you pulled more out and literally when she's done, when she was done combing it with me because 
she could have kept going and she's so talented but when she was finished going through it with me it was like son i said gabby we're done <laughs> signed sealed delivered so tammy i just want to thank you in front of everybody because i couldn't have done this without you i oh. love Oh, I'm so happy for you. I, I can't tell you, I'm elated for you that we're here in, 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 this, in this time and that you trusted the process. Um, I'm a little older than Tiffany. I'm 12 years older. And a, a lot that I, um, I ha had trouble with was relating to the time, like where people are now in dating. And um, I, I'm like, very- Are you gonna say that? I'm like, it's true, it's how it yes. is. I, I was saying, Tiffany, do you really want to say that? <laughs> and we, we all know and love Tiffany for her honesty and her genuine authenticity and uniqueness and perseverance. And um, I'm, uh, I'm jumping ahead here. Thank you for the honor of being a part of your book writing and you becoming an, a creative talent and author. And um, you are so creative in everything you do. I love the way you do my hair. <laughs> um, and, and I believe in you. And I think, I think that's the thing about your book is even if someone doesn't know Tiffany, they learn to believe in her minute one. And I, I told her that um, her book is like an insurance policy <laughs> in a way. And I'm not in the insurance field, Rachel. <laughs> um, and, and I just feel like, I feel like you're gonna look back in time and you're, you're going to see yourself in a whole different world, e even a year from now. And it, because we all change and, just knowing myself, I wished I had a book like this, like a guide and um, uh, to tell me how to look at men um, when I was single and to see men for who they were. And, um, it, you know, I was touched in this book, um, certainly uh, because I come from a naive, sheltered background and, you know, things were different for me back when. And for, for women like Tiffany, who have so much opportunity at their fingertips and um, goals are easily made or made easier because there's just so much available, such as the internet, <laughs> um, the, you know, just Facebook, social media, Instagram. Um, I, I believe that, um, I believe that you have everything that you need that that is your strength and that your that is your niche and your power as a wonder woman um, right beneath your nose you know you 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 know your answers so i'm proud of you and i loved your book i have copies of it um, i look good with it um, i i have copies of it like in my car and i have have a copy in my house and it floats around the house it went from the family room to my night table um, it, it you know i just i carry it around i lo i looked at it today i saw it on the table and i thought oh i'll need that for later and and you know it's just always right there and as the current event book and i've been i've been i haven't shelved it yet i've been keeping it handy. So yeah. I love going back to it. And um, I love the person that you are, Tiffany, and that you are, you are a great role model for so many people out there, no matter if you're a missus, a miss, miss, mister. Uh, I think, I think men should read this book too, just to understand women more. And uh, you, you, you definitely are brave and courageous in your writing. So thank you for that, for, um, from myself to everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you for everything. Much love to you Thank and you. success. Sorry, but I got your <laughs> See, you never really are alone because you even have your. <laughs> you have yeah. a queen cat. I do have a, a princess cat, for real. <laughs> 
Wow. Thank you so much, Tiffany, for inviting this incredible people, incredible women to be a part of this uh, book celebration and book launch as well. Uh, they shared incredible insight and just beautiful messages of uh, really endearment and empowerment for you, Tiffany. I think that's uh, where the person we're celebrating tonight is you and your amazing book. And, you know, your incredible friends uh, are just uh, witnesses to that, uh, to, you know, to your amazingness. So thank you, Tammy, Rachel, Leslie, for being here, uh, supporting uh, our incredible author, Tiffany, and her beautiful book. And so much more uh, is in store for the future, <laughs> Tiffany. Um, you know, they always say the you know, you are, you know, the five people you surround yourself with most and Tiffany, you're so successful because you're surrounding yourself with such powerful, beautiful women. Um, so, you know, one success is everyone's success. So thank you again uh, for our special guest who joined us for a little bit uh, to celebrate uh, Tiffany and this book. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you guys so much for coming and for sharing your words. You guys are love you. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, Tiffany, we've I've had such an incredible time listening to your guests, to you, and uh, and the night's not even over yet. We have a couple more minutes to chat a little bit more about you and the book, and I would love to kind of move on to this fun section that we have uh, with sharing some images that you just recently uh, went through. So, kind of would love to show um, uh, our audience and our in our uh, people tuning in some beautiful images that Tiffany. Um, just experienced not too long ago uh, in the Miss World pageant, and obviously her book and her the everything she shares in it um, is a testament to what she experiences on a day to day. So it's so awesome. I'm so excited to share a couple of uh, beautiful images. And Tiffany, why don't you share with us a little throwback to the Miss World pageant? Well, um, okay. So the, in the middle, the or actually to the right there. I'm sorry, my screen is only showing two of them. I can't tell what's on the far right, but um, in the middle is my friend Lauren, and she's another angel friend of mine who came with me to help me thank you God at the pageant because I was so overwhelmed. I mean, it was a lot. We had about eight things to wear a day, and you can imagine the luggage. Like Even at one point when we were on our way from the airport to the hotel, the luggage was so piled up in the car. I, I took a video and I said, anyone know where Lauren is? And she peeked in. All you could see were her eyes. It was like, where's, where's Waldo? It was like, where's Lauren? Because <laughs> we had so much luggage. So that moment, um, she was zipping up my, my corset on my dress. And I had an emotional moment with her because I just told her how much I loved her. And I thanked her for being there with me. She's such a selfless friend. I knew her back in, in our early 20s working at the makeup counter. So we've been friends for a very long time. And I love her so much. So that's my, one of my favorite pictures. Um, and then the one, I can't tell what's on the right because I've got people on there, sorry. But the one on the left with the, with the little Vogue top, that was right before the crowning. And I was like, <gasps> I mean, everything was already done. And we were on our way to go down, get on a bus and charter to the theater where we were gonna be wearing our big gowns for the evening and getting ready to crown. And I was feeling so much adrenaline at that moment. And Lauren took that picture and I just love that picture too. That was a really special moment. What a feeling I can't even describe. <laughs> I love it. The corner picture, Tiffany, is um, you and uh, I think a friend or someone with masks on. <laughs> oh, that's my friend Kimberly, Miss South Carolina. She, is it the black dresses with the black? Yes. Um, yeah, so she was my buddy there as well. We had so much fun. That was the masquerade ball. We did a photo shoot. We had to wear all black and then they gave us the masks to wear. And we got to walk through the, um, through the fog machines and do this big photo shoot thing. So super cool. Um, so that was my girl, Kimberly, who was just amazing. I bonded with her a lot at the pageant too. It was so much fun. There were people there from all the countries, all the states, um, almost all of them. Some countries, they weren't allowed to come because of COVID. And that was unfortunate. Hopefully they'll come next year. But the states and countries that were there Oh my gosh, I have friends for life. Like hmm. people have the wrong thoughts about pageants. I know there's probably some some raunchy ones out there, but they're <laughs> not like that. I mean, you really I feel like doing pageants, you challenge your body physically, A, to get in shape, best shape you've ever been in, because you know you're gonna be up there. You meet a million friends. 
I mean, of course there's probably drama, but I stay out of that. And then you get to dress up and feel great and do fun hair and makeup looks and things. Like that was the bikini competition on the left with the black there. Um, I was very nervous, but I worked out so hard training for this, thanks to my awesome trainer at B Fitness. But um, one thing that I love about that, the little belly chain that I'm wearing in the picture. So I met a lady on Facebook actually, a couple of days before I left for Miami, who makes jewelry. She made these beautiful pieces. I know she's watching. Her name is Emilia. Um, so I just want to give her a shout out because she gave me the jewelry and supported me and sponsored me for the entire pageant. So all the earrings and that belly chain and all the different jewelry that I'm wearing for the next, I don't know, however many years I can for the rest of my life because I love her jewelry um, was donated by her, uh, you and me, Miami, U N M E Miami, which are her kids initials. And now she's ended up becoming a really good friend. There she is. Hi, Amelia. So I just want to give her a big thank you and a shout out. Um, if you guys ever, her pieces are awesome because they're big and they're cool looking. I mean, not all of them are big, but I like, of course, for pageants, you want bigger jewelry, but they weigh nothing. So I hate like my earlobes are kind of stretching out a little bit. I hate heavy earrings and pageant earrings are usually extremely heavy. Hers are all really lightweight, but so cool and unique very reasonable price. Like, oh my gosh, I just love it. Um, and then that other picture with me holding the book, I was having that emotional moment. And I was like, oh my gosh, because I published the book literally, what, two days before I left. <laughs> she yeah. was, it's on Amazon. And I was like, I gotta go. I'm getting my gown fixed because it was like last minute. But um, I was holding the book and I was just like, whoa, I did it. All of this. Like, I was supposed to do this and God put me on TV. I mean, it's a reality TV show, so it will be on TV um, as soon as they're done editing the pilot and selling it to the network. So you guys will see the show on TV, the pageant. Um, I'm actually going to be in season two of the show. So stay tuned on that. It wasn't like a normal, you know, like something you see on live, like Miss America or Miss Universe, but um, it was still a huge opportunity. And I just was so blown away by the whole thing. Um, and then I think I see the other picture to the right with all the girls in their blue dresses. Um, that was right before we did a photo shoot pose off challenge, which I have a hilarious TikTok. You guys would die laughing if you saw how I prepped for that photo shoot challenge because we had to go 30 seconds uh, with, with our crowns, you know, I had that crown on um, and banners and then 30 seconds without. And I literally went on Pinterest and looked up poses and then I didn't like the faces on them. So I found faces and I taped all the routine up on my wall and then I stood there and memorized it. I think Tammy, I probably sent you a video of that <laughs> and we were giggling so hard and my, and my pageant director was like, no, you gotta be prepared, you know? And we just thought it was really funny. So that was right before the, the pose off challenge and everyone was kind of just like getting to know each other really well and all the girls were so sweet. Um, and then this was, of course, the crowning moment. So um, it was unbelievable. Okay. I was, I thought I was going to pass out. I was about to faint. Like it was so scary. They actually, and I, I'm going to give you guys all the little scoop. So um, they actually, so they were giving the title of Ms. US, or I'm sorry, Ms. World America. Okay. That was like the big thing I, we thought. And it's a reality TV show. So you just sign, you know, your life away. They can do whatever they want with you. So they were giving, crowning the Miss America, they called the top five and I was not in the top five. And I thought, okay, that's fine. Cause you know, I'm going to win Miss USA universe then. Well, um, I, they called the top five for Miss USA, which the gal in the blue dress, one of the gals that won Miss World America, absolutely stunning. Oh my gosh, gorgeous. And just so sweet, like deserving for sure. Uh, but then I got in the top five from Miss USA Universe and um, I got third runner up. So I was like, okay, I didn't win. Like, all right, well, that's fine. You know, like I'm just trying to be happy. So one by, they said, you know, after everyone who has not received a crown, please stay on the stage. We're not done yet. And Leslie, that's when Leslie and I were like, <gasps> But one by one, they literally called every single girl, she's laughing, every single girl got a crown and banner of some title, whether it was petite or elite or, um, you know, they created all these different titles. So every single girl that was there actually won something. Wow. Except for Leslie and I, we were the last one. And I'm like, Leslie, <laughs> don't leave me. And she's like, I don't know what to do. And I'm like, what's going on? I'm going to be the only loser. And she's like, gotta go. They crowned her. 
So she got crowned. <laughs> I'm standing on the stage by myself, the only person with no crown and banner. And I was like, they're gonna drop blood on my head like Carrie, and I'm gonna be the only loser. And she knew I was just <laughs> thinking, didn't you, Leslie? And I'm like, oh my gosh, what's going on? And they get, they literally said, Tiffany, we're crowning you Miss USA Universe Lady, which I found out later is 40 and under. So I'm like, that's kind of awesome at rules. Um, and then they said, stay right there. We're not done yet. You're getting, hold on, my Facebook is pausing. Um, we're not done yet. We're giving you a second crown for Miss World America Celebrity. And so I guess the celebrity was one of the most prestigious awards because it wasn't just based on judges scores, it was also voted on by the camera crew, the directors, the photographers and the staff. So I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I got double crowned like that. I didn't even think that would even be an option. And it was, and that was pretty much the end of the show. And the show is gonna be called Queen of the Crowned. And so stay tuned. Of course, I will post like crazy when, it's, when, it, when I find out when it's gonna air. Um, but the exciting thing is that every time, you know, my name will be on the TV, it's going to say Tiffany Corey author. And I was like, so proud of that. Wow. Yeah. That was absolutely amazing, Tiffany. Thank you so much for sharing those amazing stories of your experience. And obviously, super mega congratulations on all of, uh, you know, your amazing winnings um, with, with this pageant. Uh, it's so cool seeing all those pictures and, and the way you share your experiences. I'm there like living it with you. I'm just like, oh my gosh, what is she thinking? And, you know, oh, it's, it was uh, crazy. It was terrifying, <laughs> but then it was like, wow, okay. You know, so I'm super proud. I got this crown and this crown they're beautiful and now it's just I'm just going to go around and and promote the book and take pictures and do charity and keep it going as long as I can you know I want to keep giving back as much as possible as well yeah no, absolutely. I think you definitely are. <laughs> I feel like with the book, uh, you know, with these new winnings and, you know, hopefully this new show, whenever it comes out, like so much amazing things is going, uh, going for you. So I'm so excited for the future for you and like all the amazing, wonderful, uh, you know, things that you have um, going for you and, and just wishing you the best. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, of course. I want to make sure everyone tuning in, um, we linked uh, the book to Amazon. So make sure you're clicking on it. And um, obviously, we'll share that, you know, with your Facebook group too, um, Tiffany, and uh, so that everyone can get their copy. Such a beautiful, amazing book. And as well, I know we have, um, we can you believe we've been chatting for an hour already, Tiffany? Oh it's so fun. <laughs> um, wow do that <laughs> yes, definitely um but i want to make sure i want to be able to say um at least two or three um uh, audience questions so please be uh submitting any questions you might have we want to make sure we honor our audience and for, for thank thank you for tuning in and everyone uh with us here um so i'd love to maybe jump onto that some q a with our audience a couple of questions and then we have one uh final uh guest too as well that will be joining us very shortly that wants to say um a beautiful message to you tiffany uh as you know as you mentioned our beautiful and our amazing ceo of uh, epic factor media but before we move on one of the questions on here um says uh let's see here one of the questions is da, 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 there's we have like a, a couple of questions <laughs> what are some as um any words for aspiring authors that are going through a similar situation mm. okay. i think that just write 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 it all because whatever your whatever your situation is that you're having a hard time coping with it, you'll feel good just writing about it because you're getting it out and even if it's not something that you know how to even explain what's happening somehow as you're writing it, even if you're never going to read it again, or even if you're going to burn it so that you can let it go, you know, I mean, it's just therapy. It's therapy to write it. And I know so many people have reached out to me and said, oh my gosh, you finally published your book. I want to publish a book. And I'm like, okay, great. Let's, let's talk about it. You know, I can tell you about how I did it and the help that I got. And they're like, I just don't know where to start. And so many people, I'm like, just start by just going, just get a piece of paper or type it. I like, I prefer typing mine. Um, I just, I don't know. I like to do, I like to keep it safe and private in a computer, especially when I was going through what I was going through. But 
um, you know, I think it's just get started. Just start. What are you waiting for? Oh. <laughs> and, yes. help come. and if you need help, reach out to Think Factor Media. You will get the help you need. Just go. Yes, of course. I love it. I love that pragmatic and action-based to do it. <laughs> to advise, just do it. Love it. Thanks, Tiffany. And someone else asked, um, how long did it, this process uh, take for you from start to finish um, for us uh, considering and writing a book? So I would say a year, like one year exactly. Um, I mean, obviously, like I told you, I wrote a, a couple other books, but for sure I started over, it would have been, gosh, Gabby, was it August, September? We've talked about this before. Yeah, I think it was about a year. <laughs> It's like exactly a year. Mm -hmm. Yep. Love that. <laughs> so mm -hmm. awesome. And yes, like Tiffany said, any questions, reach out to us and we'll definitely give you some amazing information. <laughs> but next question, I like this one, Tiffany says, someone, um, how do you add self-care to your busy, busy schedule? Well, so I... I am very busy, especially as a single mom and having, you know, now that this company and then my salon and, you know, it's not easy. Um, I, I think my, my biggest thing is being able to adjust my schedule. I just did this a, a couple weeks ago when school started again. I realized that during the past year, I have been taking clients when I can, when it's convenient for the clients even if my son was at home doing his e-learning because I had to. And now that he's back in school, I was still taking clients in the evenings when he was home with me and not spending that time with him. And he misses me. So after having like one more night of like me trying to shuffle clients and him and everything, I realized I have to move my schedule. I have to redo, redo it again. And it's okay. I mean, we're going to need to do that a lot. I think throughout life, we need to be able to just adapt and adjust and say, you know what, grab the planner, mark out the times, make time for yourself, make time for your child, make time for whatever it is you need to do for you and stick to the schedule. Obviously everyone likes routines, so it's important to get a good routine, but I just, I feel like, you know, I'm able to now go, okay, these are the days when I do not have my son because I'm co-parenting. Those are the times that I can take my clients. And there's no reason I can't, unless I have, you know, something for me, which is fine too. But, you know, being able to say no, you know, and I'm learning to say no, and that's not easy for me sometimes, um, especially when during COVID, I would like, I had to say yes, yes, yes to anything what, that my customers wanted because I obviously business was affected. So yeah. it's just time ba balancing and then scheduling in that self-care for yourself, you know, when you don't have your child. You know, and I talk about in the book, the co-parenting and how hard it was for me as well, just like Leslie said, to not have my parenting time because I was with my son every minute of every day for the first five, six years of his life. And then all of a sudden it's, now what do I do when he's not with me? And I want my child and, and, and how, how does he feel, you know? And I felt so guilty. Um, and I do think, like Rachel said too, there's times now that I think, all right, it's his dad's turn now. And I can do me, you know, and like today I went to the mall for a little bit and I was like, oh, this is so nice, you know, so you learn, you do grow to appreciate it eventually. And, you know, you still miss your child too, but um, mm -hmm. it does help to do the self-care, you know, and as far as like, when you're having a bad day, put on some lipstick, go dress up, dress nice, try on clothes, do something like turn on the music. I mean, during COVID, I was turning music on in my bathroom and just having my own little party. And I had to learn how to really be happy alone. And I really was writing about it the whole time because I had to do it myself. Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. I think you shared amazing nuggets. And I think that we're all busy, but, you know, making time for self-care and everything that you mentioned is so important and part of our success too. taking care of ourselves first, too, so we can take care of the rest. Totally, because our children do mirror our attitudes, even if they're young. They do. I mean, my son is if I'm having a bad day, he's having a bad day and and he doesn't even know why <laughs> he, and he doesn't know why I'm having a bad day. He just knows he's crying and I'm like, well, that's wrong. And he's like, I don't know. You know, so if I'm happy mommy, and that's the goal with me, how do I get so happy that I'm cooking him dinner and dancing in the kitchen because I made me happy, you know? So taking the time to fix my hair or, you know, go get my nails done or do something 
go for a run. I mean, you don't have to do things that cost money. You can go for a, a bike ride. I went for a bike ride this morning because I was a little bit stressed out. And I just take that time to, to make myself happy because then I'm able to make everyone else happy too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, love that. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tiffany. And I think we have um, time for one more question before we move to some book giveaways and then a final uh, a special guest joining us. But one of the questions was, um, if you would think of a sequel or uh, kind of the next book, do you have it in mind? Um, and as well, what's next for you? <laughs> what does the future look like? As much as you can share. Oh my gosh, I don't know. I feel like I want these to be the next sequels, these titles. And I don't know how, I already started writing again, by the way, <laughs> it's just beginning. So I don't know where it's gonna go. And that's the thing, as my life is happening, I'm writing. So I don't know, we're just gonna have to see what, what comes in store for my life. And mm -hmm. if there is ever going to be a mister in the future, obviously I will want to write about that from his point of view. Um, but also my son is the mister too. So. I've kind of toyed with the idea of, cause he's very much an empath too. And he's so kind and so sweet and so loving. Like, wouldn't it be cool if he helped write the Mr. Book or even just a children's book to help children deal with coping with parents of divorce? Those are some thoughts in my head. Um, you know, this, you never know. I could have a granddaughter one day. I don't know. Um, and then me, of course I could write a book called me all day long, but I don't know if you guys want to hear that, but Mrs. If I ever become a Mrs. again, I don't know. So we're, we're going to just wait and see, but I've already started writing. So whatever's going to happen, you'll find out. <laughs> yes, <laughs> those are for great answers. And I love that you're so open to what, you know, what life will take you in those projects and, uh, you know, we'll see what happens, but I love that you're open and, and ready for the next adventures <laughs> as they come. Our people should write their stories. I really think that we all have stories, you know, and we can all learn from each other. And the more that people share, mm -hmm. are we going to learn more about each other and learn more coping mechanisms and ways to love ourselves and all the different things. So, yes, no, fantastic. This has been so amazing talking to you, Tiffany, and everyone tuning in. Thank you for your questions, for your support. Um, well, definitely, you'll have to continue the conversation in your group, <laughs> Tiffany. Yes. I know that uh, our time is limited, but this has been so amazing. And I want to make sure that, as I said in the beginning, we have uh, three special giveaways for our incredible audience tuning in um, and the people who registered. So I want to make sure I uh, mention that. Thank you. Thank you to those who are supporting us, joining us in this incredible event. Uh, and with that, we wanna say thank you uh, to three book giveaways. We have Christy uh, Sowen. Uh, congratulations to Christy. Uh, we also have uh, Gabriela Vera, Gabby Vera, congratulations. <laughs> and Angie Tar uh, Tarbill. Hey, uh, awesome. <laughs> yes. So thank you, thank you to Angie, Gabby, Christy for joining us and for tuning in. Um, and then we'll send you an amazing copy of Miss uh, Book. So thank you, thank you with that. Um, and with that, I'm so excited to also introduce our amazing uh, last special guest, as Jackie, I mean, as Tiffany mentioned, um, we're here uh, at, at Fig Factor Media, having the privilege to work with Tiffany uh, because of our incredible founder and CEO of Fig Factor Media. Um, Jackie Camacho Ruiz uh, is our incredible founder of Fig Factor Media. She is a fantastic human being, um, always uh, ready to share and elevate the stories of others. Um, and we cannot be more excited to also have her uh, join us for a little bit as well to share a few words uh, with our incredible author, Tiffany. Um, and this beautiful launch that we're hosting today. So with that, thank you and welcome, welcome, Jackie. <laughs> thank you so much beauty today. I mean, would everybody agree that there's so much beauty on the outside and most importantly on the inside? Uh, Tiffany, I am so happy. I am so proud of you. I know that there were many sleepless nights in the process. There's a lot of healing. There's a lot of expansion of ideas. Um, even a new business was born through the process of writing this book and, you know, getting your, your crowns and, and just continuing that amazing journey that you started. This is actually the first time ever 
that we have a child, an amazing child, write the preface for a book ever in the history of our publishing over 100 titles over the years. And even my 26 books, of my, you know, the 26 books that I published on my own, I've never had a child write the preface. And how amazing and how special that you led that innovation and that you were open to, to that, you know, conversation. And you, you know, said, why, why, what about my son? What about my son writing it? And even the technology that infused that and how we had an opportunity to interview your son uh, with video over the phone and then put a QR code on the preface. So if you, you haven't seen that, uh, please take a moment to, to, to read it, to see it, because it is uh, just such an innovative thing. But, you know, uh, I've heard some of these amazing names, uh, Tammy, uh, Rachel, and Leslie, through the conversations with, uh, with Tiffany. And I'm just, uh, you guys are absolutely beautiful and amazing. And, you know, on behalf of Fig Factor Media, I wanna thank you for taking the time to be here and celebrate such a beautiful soul. And I know that Tiffany is gonna continue to give us amazing things to, you know, share it and, and celebrate because that's the person that she is. She's gonna continue to give with her generous, beautiful spirit and continue to elevate others through her business, through her pageants, through, you know, the, you know, everything that she does, you know, on a, on a daily basis and now as an author. So I know Spider-Man said, or in the movie of Spider-Man, they said with great success comes great responsibility. And I know that there's no one better than you, Tiffany, to embrace this awesome responsibility to inspire and elevate people around the world because your story is worth sharing and your life is worth celebrating. So thank you so much for your trust. Congratulations uh, and may you continue to be blessed in every way uh, through everything you do and all the divine downloads as I call them that come to your heart uh, because you're such a beautiful, amazing person. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you. Let's see my, I'm showing off my- Does everyone my see why I had the most amazing help ever to do this? Uh. <laughs> I we couldn't live without you. Thank you, you for everything. Oh, and Gabby. I mean, there was one night that I woke up at, I think it was 2.30 in the morning. Because sometimes I wake up at 2.33 in the morning and I have these, you know, oh, my Facebook again. I have these big like <laughs> aha moments at, in the middle of the night. And I, I woke up, actually I had a bad dream. And I woke up and I was shook up. And it's, you know, when you're alone in a house, sometimes you get you get scared, you know? So I got scared. I thought, all right, I'm going to go just look at Facebook and distract myself. And I looked at my emails and Gabby sent me an email at 2.30, 2.33. I remember. And I was like, that is so weird. And she had questions for me. So I wrote her back and then we realized we were talking at 2.30 in the morning. And I'm like, is she still working on my stuff? Like we were working hard and getting things accomplished. Gabby, do you remember? Sure, yeah. <laughs> I remember. I was like, oh, we're chatting at 2 a.m. Like, I had a bad dream. Thanks for being here. And then I, it took my mind off it. I went right back to sleep. Slept like a baby. <laughs> so it was a lot of work, but now everyone can see how amazing everyone at Fig Factor Media was this, was this amazing. And I couldn't have done it without you guys. And thank you, Jackie, so much. This is exceeds my expectations of what I had wanted and pictured when I even thought about this process. Mm. Love that. Thank you so much, Tiffany. Thank you so much, Jackie, for being here and sharing a couple of words with Tiffany. Uh, we know, Tiffany, how important this moment is for you. And, and like Jackie said, we're here uh, to elevate your story and, you know, all the stories that we tell uh, through our authors at Big Factor. So uh, it has been an incredible evening talking to you, talking to our guests and all of our audiences tuning in about you and elevating and launching this incredible book. This is just the beginning. Uh, that's the exciting part that this is really just the beginning of all the amazing things coming uh, up as well for you. So uh, with that, I want to say thank you once again to everyone. Uh, Tiffany, I want to make sure I give you the final word so you can send us off, uh, you know, with any final words for you. But uh, this evening was for you to celebrate you, to celebrate your book, your story, and, uh, and thank you so much. So with that, I want to give you the floor, close us off um, before we move on. <laughs> I think what comes to mind is just that 
you know, when I was talking with the editing team about my book, they said, what is your why? What's your mission of the book? What's the point? And I said, the point is you alone are enough. I kept thinking about that Maya Angelou quote, you alone are enough. And I, and they kept saying, but why, but why, but why? And I realized while I was writing, because I'm never alone, we're never alone. We're always, my cat's always here, or, you know, I'm walking on the beach and there's a beautiful seagull, like we are never alone. And then beautiful friends and angels are coming into our lives all the time. So you are not alone. If you're going through trauma, if you're separation, if you're having a bad marriage, if you're scared about getting married, if you're divorcing, if you're divorced, and you are not alone. And hopefully this book will help you to know that. And, you know, the most important thing that you do have, even when you do think you are alone, is you. So you always have yourself. And you're the only person who really controls if you jump out of the way of a moving car, you know? You have you, you have you to protect yourself. You have you to also build yourself up. So that was my mission with this book was to teach myself how to do it so I could teach others how to do it. So I really hope that does it for you. Thank you so much. For Thank, you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you everyone for coming. We appreciate you. Uh, you know, really truly for being here. Want to make sure that, that you um, know that this book is available in paperback and ebook. Um, and uh, you know, any any uh, version that you like, hopefully we'll have. <laughs> have soon too, but thank you uh, for coming to celebrate Ms. No matter the title, rise from trauma to triumph and learn to love yourself. Thank you everyone. Have an amazing evening and congratulations once again, Tiffany. Thank you. Thank, <laughs> thank you. Bye everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye guys.